Hello, it's the 5th of February 2018, Derbyshire Heritage Project, uh, and we're still talking to Mark Eckled. Mark Eckled, uh, a journalist of uh, how many years' experience? Uh, in total, 33. Right, and um, we mentioned earlier um, how um, you got engaged with the, uh, the cricket with, when you're writing. Um, how, how do you how does it engage you? Do you get really worked up if, if it's exciting or can you maintain a distance? Can you be dispassionate with the... Uh, you do. You, the you do become completely dispassionate, really. Yeah. Um, it's, it's part of that is, is press box decorum. It's, uh, it's, it's very irritating if you, uh, if you have someone in the press box who's jumping up and down and screaming, get in there mm. and you beauty and all that kind of thing mm. uh, when, when the wicket goes down. Mm. So, you're, uh, you're, you're, so you're, you're, very, you're very modest about how much you're enjoying the match then when, you, well, when you're writing. You, you kind of, you, you become detached from it. Mm. Um, you, you just watch the game from a journalist's point of view. You don't, it's, it's hard to explain. You, mm. you don't watch it as a fan. You watch mm. it as a professional. Right. But you've seen quite a lot of cricket either as a fan, like you mentioned, uh, earlier um, as a kid at Queen's mm. Park on, on the Sunday afternoon. Mm. So either as a fan or as a journalist, where would you say your favourite matches involving Derbyshire have been? Two leap immediately to mind mm. uh, as, as favourite matches. I think my favourite game of all time uh, covering Derbyshire was uh, in the, uh, the Division 1 year uh, at Taunton. Um, it was, it was a great game of cricket, first and foremost. Uh, the weather was beautiful. Uh, Taunton is, 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 is an ideal place to be anyway. Uh, and it, it, was, it was just the entire, the entire four-day atmosphere was, was everything you could possibly mm. wish for. Enthusiastic for spectators. Yeah, yeah, there were there people were reasonably it was, knowledgeable. It was, a, it, was, it was just a tremendous game. I remember the Derbyshire bowled first and bowled Somerset out for about 100. Mm. Uh, they'd, they'd just come there more or less straight from the oval and, and lost narrowly at the mm. oval. Uh, but but I'd, I'd won a couple of games before then, and, and very late in the season, their Division 1 uh, campaign was, was underway. Mm -hmm. They went, went, to, went to Taunton, bowled them out for 100. Uh, it was a really important match as well, wasn't it? It, well, it, was, it was kind of, they still got chance of staying mm. up there. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, it was an important game. Um, then they scored something like about 290 on or whatever, uh, got a decent lead. But then, then Somerset got almost 500, uh, as, I, as I recall, and left Derbyshire with a, about 240 to win. Yeah, so for, fortunes are going either way during the course it, of the it match. It was, it was. It was a real up and down kind of emotional game. Uh, and and it was started to turn around corners as mm. well. They, they had an Indian spinner, um, was it Chowla? Uh, mm. Pierce Chowla, yeah. Pierce Chowla, yeah. And and uh, and decent uh, English kid who's I can't remember his name now. But uh, uh, Peter Burgoyne, wasn't it? No, 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 no. It, uh, playing for Somerset. There was oh, sorry. A, a spinner who was who actually out, out bowled Chowla in mm. in lots of ways on that last day, but uh, it became a, a really testing. Last final day for the for the Derbyshire to get there, and, and but um, Chanda Paul played beautifully, just mm. anchored the innings, uh, and Grant Holt came in and, and did his usual whack. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he was so you know he's so sort of dogged in in lots mm. of ways, just hung in there with with uh, with with Chanda Paul, and, and Chanda Paul was dropped with about a dozen runs to get on such and something like that. And, and, but they, they managed to get over the line. It was a perfect finish to a perfect four days of cricket. I remember that one, and, and the other one that really comes to mind is uh, is Bristol in uh, 2010, mm. uh, where they were bowled out in the first morning for 44. Oh dear! <laughs> oh, it was, it was an outrageous, outrageous wicket. Uh, and Gloucestershire still had a chance of getting promoted, so they they prepared a wicket that was designed to a bit too it, sporting it wasn't going to be a draw oh right oh yeah. look, it was it was incredibly I, I remember watching the first over and chris rogers opened mm. uh i think it might have been lewis who was bowling the first over uh and chris rogers a left-hander of course mm. went to defend a ball on his leg 
and the ball swung and missed his off stump by a, a good couple of feet. And you think, oh my lord, this is this is going to be quite a, quite a ride. This is the, this is the first or second over of the the day. Yeah, is it? it is. It is. And it bowled out forty four. Uh, Gloucestershire got a lead. Um, uh, Derbyshire batted a lot better in the second. And Chesney Hughes, uh, ninety six not finished. Ninety six not out. Played the innings of his life. He could have been out fifty times, in truth. Mm. But he was a magnificent innings full of character. Uh, but Gloucestershire still only had about 120 to get to win, so uh, so he more or less wrote it off. But but then Derbyshire bowled him out for 70, and, and, and I remember that game mostly for the for the look of immense satisfaction on on John Morris's face uh, as he as he, he, he said, well, these people try to try to pull one off on us here and. Mm. It you went know, wrong we, for them. <laughs> it went wrong. We yeah. beat them. It serves yeah. them bloody right. Yeah. And uh, that, that, was a, that was a wonderful. We only lasted about two and a half days, but uh, it was a great, great yeah. game. So you had, a, you had a nice trip around Bristol as well after that. <laughs> no, you had to come home then. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, so they're, they're the two that really outs, uh, outstanding matches yeah, in, in, in your memory. Yeah. Um, and players who, who's really stood up as a, stood out as a player that you've not necessarily because he's played for England, but because mm. there's, there's some aspect of his character that's made him entertaining. Yeah, well, in, in my early days, Dominic Court was always, always entertaining to watch, because, uh, and mostly because he was such a, a fantastic player as well. Mm. Uh, and just, uh, just kept competing all the time. Immense character, immense character. If, if, if they, they do talk in cliches about uh, people you'd want to have playing for your life, and mm. And wouldn't want to ever come into that, but uh, mm. I think Dominic Court would have been my selection of, uh, of, of a man to put in a, a performance to, to save your life. Um, I loved watching watching Corky play, mm. uh, and then beyond there, Graham Welsh became a huge favourite. I mean, mostly because I, I liked him as a as a person. Uh, got on tremendously well with him. Uh, established a report with him straight away. But again, a huge character of a cricketer, a man who would uh, would run in all day, and well, he would complain because mm. that was his nature, but <laughs> he'd, he'd do it anyway. Uh, so I, 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 I always always enjoyed watching Graham Walsh, and, and more towards the modern era, Wayne Madsen, mm. fantastic bloke, mm. as as nice a man as you could ever meet, and a tremendous cricketer as well, who, who just applies himself in the right way. And does everything in his life the right way, really? Mm. But uh, as a cricketer, he's, he's, he's just been wonderful to watch. Never a flamboyant player. Got all the all the style in the world and can play some beautiful shots. But just just a great man mm. as much as anything. Yeah. Um, and your favourite matches at Derby or Chesterfield? Anything that's <laughs> yeah, home matches that home other matches. people, a few more people might have seen. I think that it's hard to go beyond the, mm. the, the day in 2012 when uh, when promotion was won. That that, yeah. will, uh, that will always be a very special memory. Um, and being able to stand within uh, champagne spray distance of uh, of the players as they celebrated and mm. uh, and. That's your first and only taste of champagne, was it? <laughs> it is on a cricket ground, yes. <laughs> and that, that was that was a special day. Um, I've, I've never considered myself a, a Derbyshire supporter because mm. it was Dar covering Derbyshire was always my job. Mm. I've always considered myself a Yorkshire supporter. Mm. But um, you can't be around a club and be so close to a club and be close to the people involved in the club without it, it getting to you and, and, and becoming part of you and, and getting into your heart. Uh, and I was so pleased for so many people that day that, uh, that, that they'd, they'd been able to achieve. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was wonderful to watch it. I'd, I'd not gone, gone through so much suffering as, uh, mm -hmm. as, as a lot of Derbyshire followers, but uh, I was able to appreciate that for them. And now you're um, now you're away from that, and you're in the in the office, and you're <laughs> organising the paper rather than doing the reporting, are you? Yeah, afraid so. You still miss those days, then? Oh, hugely, immensely. Yeah. yeah look, it, it, it hurts 
<laughs> I'm afraid. Yeah, but, uh, you, you can't get out of yeah. it. You can't get away from it. There were, there were fabulous days. And as I said in the early interview, I, I always knew it had come to an end one mm. day. So you, so you always spend your time with that knowledge and thinking, well, I'm going to make the most of this. Uh, I'm going to do as good a job as I could possibly do because one day it will finish and I don't want to regret anything mm. about it but you, you, you can't help but miss it. You'll be, you'll be st still looking back on it with a lot of satisfaction and affection. Oh, they, they were the, the, the happiest and most rewarding years of my journalistic career without, without a shadow yeah. of a doubt. And it was, as a, as a cricket reporter, you had what, 12, 14 years? Uh, I had um, uh, 13 years of doing it properly mm. and uh, a couple of years after that of kind of playing at it a little yeah, bit yeah. In, in, in a half-hearted way mm -hmm. because of the demands, new demands mm. of the job, but 13 years of doing it properly. Yeah. And you've, you've, you've seen quite a lot of change over that because 2020 mm. cropped up, mm. um, the, count, the county year. championship's been devalued. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think no one wants to hit or fewer people want to hear about the, the county championship? as avidly as, say, I do. Mm. It's a generation thing, unfortunately. Mm. Um, the the one-day cricket has become more of a priority. Mm. Uh, it, it gets people through the gates, and, and mm. I have no quibble with that. It's, uh, it's, it's, got its, it's got its place in the game. Yeah. Um, personally, I'd always, have a, I'd always want to watch four-day cricket, because uh, I don't think you can beat that feeling of turning up for the, the first day of a new championship match and thinking, well, what is going to happen now over these four days? Mm. It's, 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 it's a marvellous feeling, marvellous feeling, mm. so, so just anticipation. But one day cricket's fine, mm. fine. I, I've no, I've no problem with it. Mm. It just doesn't give me the same thrill. Yeah, um, and technology, of course, that's that's changed a little bit as well, hasn't yeah, it? You've, you've, uh, huge. Because I think Twitter's probably came along during your time. Mm -hmm. You weren't used to that at all. Were you? No, no, no. Well, well, when I first I've done football matches, and I've done, I've done football matches where mm. uh, where before mobile phones, where you'd uh, you'd have to uh, sneak off to the clubhouse or try and find a phone box. Uh, at half time to to send your reports through to Put, putting the, the coins in the slot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, do running reports for 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 the sports papers and mm. uh, have to run away and invariably you miss a goal, of course, and have to try and catch up. But th that's the way they used to do it at cricket as well. They'd, yeah. they'd have they'd employ uh, what they call runners, mm. kids, essentially to uh, to take the sheets of paper and phone them through to uh, to the office. And but now sit down with laptops and ping them off straight away. In fact, you don't even ping them off now. You, you put them straight onto the web. Ooh, how do you do, how do you make sure you spelt everything correctly? I <laughs> never, never <laughs> did a misspelling in my life. Oh, absolutely. Well, obviously you didn't work for the Guardian. <laughs> the Groan, yeah. The Groan, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it's changed immensely and social mm. media is, 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 gives you the opportunity now to, 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 to reach people immediately mm. and, and keep them informed all the way yeah it's, it's, it, it makes it it's another demand yeah so uh, people now have to more or less sit in the press box all the time and constantly updating social media yeah so do you ever find that a quick fire twitter thing can actually guide someone to a more detailed report that's that's always the way it should be mm. rather than giving out uh, giving everything away over Twitter, people, some people, well, the clubs, for example, just just run it as uh, their, their Twitter account as as a, as role a score report. check. Mm. Yeah, as a role. I always think it should be a way of selling mm. the, the the most important product, which is which is the the finished report or the uh, or or to say it's put out on Twitter, say, well, you you're going to want to read this this interview with so and so that I've just done. Um, here's the link. Rather than just giving everything away on social media, I don't see the point in that. Mm. Right. Well, I think that's covered everything we'd like to know. <laughs> so. um, it's been a brilliant career for you. Obviously, you're still you're still involved in the journalism, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Of course. So it's not not the way I want, unfortunately. Oh. Can't you can't you found your own paper and do it that way? <laughs> Nobody wants papers these no, days. That's part of the problem. Yeah. You have to run your own website. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah, and of course you do have a website. Yes. Are you bound to? Are you involved in, in that? No, I, I just do the print. Uh -huh. uh, we have separate um, separate departments now doing doing prints and digital. Um, I'm involved in the print, so that's where my experience is. Yeah. That's uh, that's where my passion is, really. So I just do the print. Okay, good old Gutenberg, eh? Right, Mark. Thanks very much again for all your all your efforts and uh, all your all your stories. Great Pleasure. to listen to. Thank you very much. Come, thanks.